This is the Mondraker Neat and it is their very first super lightweight electric mountain bike. It's only 18 kilos and that's made possible by TQ's motor system, the HPR 50, which is a 50 newton meter motor, putting out around 300 watts of peak power. And it's got TQ's 360 watt hour battery mounted in the frame that you would barely notice. In fact, the entire e-bike looks super slimline, super svelte and really lightweight. The frame and the silhouette of it look virtually indistinguishable from a regular pedal bike. Mondraker has masterfully integrated the TQ HBR50 motor and a sleek 360 watt hour battery into the Neat's frame and it creates a seamless, almost invisible power system. This is an 18 kilo super light e-bike with 150 mil of rear wheel travel and 160 mil fork. It's a full 29er and Mondraker says it's taken three years of R&D to produce this bike and it's got some unique cool features. Mondraker say the frame utilizes their Stealth Air carbon technology, which results in a frame that weighs only 2.3 kilos. The lightness is a key factor in creating a sub 18 kilo e-bike with a fully removable battery. Mondraker were pioneers of longer geometry back in the day, and this bike shares the same concepts that were introduced all those years ago, something Mondraker call forward geometry. Essentially, this geometry extends the front wheel forward, lengthens the top tube, but keeps the cockpit compact. This configuration aims to provide a more secure feeling during descents, but also maintains agility for maneuverability. As well as having a removable internal battery, the frame can carry range extenders. The range extender also uses Fidlock, which is really cool. I've never seen one like this before. It's got the Fidlock mounting system and a little locking tab just underneath. And what that means is it's very, very quick and easy to mount. And this power cable will just pop into the charging port and it will lock on with that tab. And the other thing is that you can carry two of these. One will be plugged in at a time and if you use this one completely, you can swap it out. So you could have a range extender also mounted just under there or you could use a range extender and a water bottle. So this would mount on there. You can actually fit a water bottle underneath there. Whereas most e-bikes that have a range extender, you sacrifice the water bottle mount for the range extender. So you've got to make a choice, especially if you're going for a longer ride, you're probably going to want a little bit of water on board. So here you can actually have the range extender and a water bottle on the bike. The TQ motor system provides up to 300 watts of power and 50 newton meters of torque and is almost silent in operation. The lightweight bike means living with it is easy, getting in and out of a shed, a car, or just putting it on your back for bike backing up a trail is actually a thing. I'll cover more on the bike handling later, but first impressions are it's fast and very lively. There's something really quite serene and peaceful riding this bike. I noticed I could hear the sounds of nature, the tyres and my heart rate and breathing. It's a bike that makes you work for it though. It's a pedaling e-bike. And by that I mean, you feel like you're getting a workout on it. It's still able to get me up the hills that I would not even try on a regular pedal bike. But boy, I had to work hard for it. And I love the feeling of the burn sometimes and that high 185 beats per minute heart rate and that feeling of accomplishing big effort climbs.
Now this is Mondraker's top spec model, the RRSL. So the most expensive premium and the lightest weight e-bike. It's a full carbon frame, carbon wheels, Fox Factory 160 and a Fox Float X shock, both factory level suspension. This bike weighs 18 kilos in this spec here. That's with the SRAM's XX wireless drivetrain and the Axis dropper. So the TQ kit on the bike, you've got the TQ HPR50 motor, which is only revealed on the non-drive side. It's just this tiny, tiny little system that's housed in there. And it really is no bigger than, you know, a kind of palm sized motor system. And they've done a great piece of engineering on that to get it down to that compact size whilst giving 50 newton meters of torque. Then we've got the little screen on the top. It's very flush. So from this angle, can't really see it. There's a nice, neat, integrated, flush top tube display. And there's a toggle button on the top where you can go through some various settings and modes. You can see things like the battery level, how many watts your legs are putting into the bike and how many watts the motor system's giving back to you. And then we've got this really neat but tactile remote control. And it may seem like a very inconsequential thing, but it's very tactile. You can feel the buttons and the separation between the buttons easily. That might sound like a really trivial small thing, but it's, it's not. When you're riding, you don't have to look down. It's easy to feel where the buttons are and it's easy to change modes quickly. It's not wireless. It's one thing that I would have liked to have seen. There is a cable that goes from the remote to the e-bike. It would have been a nice touch if this was completely wireless Bluetooth like you can get on some bikes. But other than that, it's a very clean, well integrated, fine example of a super light electric mountain bike. Pedaling the bike on natural bridleways, long steady climbs and undulating terrain, I found the bike felt like it had a stable suspension platform and chassis. These rides were certainly feeling like workout rides for me. I couldn't be a passenger on the bike, and it made me work hard for the miles and the climbs. When it came to hitting some of the techie descents, the bike's got a distinctive character. So the handling on the bike is so lively. The first ride I got on it, I forget how lively the lightweight e-bikes are. The biggest thing I noticed was how easy it was to lift the front end up when needed and how easy it was to get the back end up and over things with minimal effort. The weight distribution of the bike with low centre of gravity gave it an extremely agile, lively and direct feeling ride. It's a little bit twitchy over some of the rougher stuff where you don't have that high weight giving you that stability but that means you can move it around so much quicker and easier on the trail the bike could move direction quick darting from left to right with very little body movement line choices were easy to adjust and it felt quite stable on some of my local enduro tracks even though the head angle isn't the slackest at 64 and a half degrees. The bike's rear center was nice and long with 450 mil chainstays. And with my size large bike, I felt it was easy enough to load the front wheel to get enough traction on the front tire. Even in the wet British winter conditions, I felt I could push the bike quite hard. So there's three things that I want to talk about with regards to the uh, TQ e-bike system integrated onto the bike, and then we'll get onto the actual ride experience of the Mondrake and Neat in a little bit. First thing with the ride experience is the audio and the visual aesthetics that you get when you put a TQ e-bike system into one of these bikes. Now, it is so, so quiet. It is not silent, but it is so stealthy that you really have to listen out for any motor noise. And when I talk about motor noise, I mean motor noise going down as well as up. See, some e-bike systems can have a distinct rattle and that can be very off-putting. And it's something that you can get used to, but you don't realize is so bad until you ride a silent bike like this. So when you're going down a trail, there is, minimal clatter, if any noise from the motor whatsoever. So you can hear the tires, the dirt, the debris, the rocks, and all that stuff over and above any motor noise. So 
way more like a traditional pedal bike compared to an e-mountain bike that has an inherent noise in most e-bike systems. And when you're under power, it's so peaceful and virtually silent. On some of these sunset and dusk rides, you can just hear the nature, the birds, the wildlife, and the tires getting grip under the dirt. Now on the full power bikes, there's a constant noise going up. Uh, a whine from the motor and a clatter when you're going down and don't get me wrong you get used to it and some people just can filter it out completely but it's not until you get to a quiet bike like this that you can appreciate how nice it is just to have no electrical motor noise and visually the integration of the motor and the controls and the flush top tube display just makes it all seamless. And this audio visual experience just make riding the e-bike better. There's very little clutter. There's very little in the way to get distracted, both from what you see and what you hear. And that's a beautiful thing on an e-bike. Second is the actual ride experience and how smooth it is. The delivery of the power when it tapers off, when you get over the limit, it's very easy to pedal over the limit, just like a regular pedal bike. I don't think there's any drag at all. You can just pedal it with the battery taken out or you can pedal it off easily. It is different to most e-bike systems that when they run out of battery, you know you're on an e-bike, whereas this just has a very smooth characteristic, both on and off the power. There's no motor overrun after you've finished pedaling. So it's just like a natural pedal feel like you'd get from a regular pedal bike but you've got 300 watts of assistance and 50 newton meters of torque. And third, I wanna talk about the efficiency and who it's for, and maybe who a bike like this is not for. These e-bikes perhaps should be treated like pedal bikes with motors rather than e-bikes. And I know that's a really strange thing to say, but e-bikes have a full power mode and it's easy to become a passenger and put it into turbo. This is like a regular pedal bike with a little bit of assistance. And if you treat it like that, it will reward you massively. You still have to put in the effort. You cannot just cruise along and be a passenger. And I actually really enjoyed it going out for a actual workout ride on this bike. I can hit some super steep stuff that I wouldn't be able to clear on a regular pedal bike. I, I just wouldn't have the power in my legs. But because this gives an additional 300 watts of power, I could get up some really steep stuff on my local trails that was very difficult, but I managed to do it. And without that motor power, I definitely wouldn't have done it. On the flip side, if you ride this in full power mode and you crank up it to turbo and just pedal, you are not gonna get a huge amount of range. It's not really what this bike is designed for, but if you do, you'll get about seven to 800 meters of vertical and around an hour to an hour and a half. That's in full turbo, but that's not how this bike really should be ridden. This is a pedal bike with assistance and you can ride it in the eco mode or the trail mode and you can get a long ride out of it. And you've still got the turbo if you want a little bit more power. You can take a range extender, you can take two range extenders, but just I wanna reiterate the point that it is very easy to rinse the battery very quickly in turbo if you want to. So if you want to go out for an hour and have a quick spin, you can bash it in turbo and get a decent ride in. But really, if you want a long ride, you're going to need to run it in one of the lower modes or perhaps take a range extender or both if you want to have a really long ride. So I would say a bike like this is for those that enjoy the feeling of a regular pedal bike, but you get way more more ride time, more range, and you can just achieve more than you would on a regular pedal bike. Albeit you've got a very similar ride characteristic to a regular pedal mountain bike. It comes with those benefits like agile, poppy, playful. You can move it around much easier, significantly easier than a full power bike. And there are a big contrast to a full power bike. My full power bike is 24 kilos and this is 18 kilos. So there's a significant difference in ride feel and power output and the experience that you get out of it. Now, when you're just pedaling along, the bike has a nice efficient pedaling platform. There's very little bob. The geometry lends itself to long days out in the saddle. It feels very, very comfortable to ride. As soon as you start hitting the very steep stuff, it can get a little bit chattering. It can feel a little bit uh, choppy. 
Um, but most of that is because the light weight of the bike doesn't plow through things. It wants to pop and hop and skip over them. And it makes the ride feel quite lively. You're less of a passenger on this bike and you're more in control and it wants to dart around and nip around and twist and the back wheel wants to lift up the front wheel is very easy to pop up and the suspension leverage curve is fairly active it's not the most supple on the rear but i don't expect that with a 150 mil travel lightweight e-bike the fox 36 is a great match for this bike the grip 2 damper is superb the tune on it is great now i did ride this mostly in winter and i did find the brakes lacking when it got wet it's fine on most rides but i found when it was on the wet steep stuff i just lacked that bite and i lacked that all-out power to slow the bike down being full 29 tons of grip on the front and the rear but just was finding it wasn't quite reducing the speed as much as i'd like so that's the only thing that i'd perhaps change on the bike and you might notice there's a mud tire on the front because it's been super muddy and i do wonder other than the cost why you might not choose this over a regular pedal bike without a motor because it offers virtually all of the benefits of a, a lightweight enduro or mountain rig but you can just ride much further and I know some people aren't quite ready to make the move maybe to an electric mountain bike just yet, but this really does bridge the gap. So yeah, I, I'm curious to your thoughts. Why, why would you not pick this other than the price? And I understand that the price is a big factor, but why would you not pick this over a regular 15 kilo, 16 kilo all mountain enduro bike? Interesting in your thoughts. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know any questions you've got and thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.